Okay, welcome everybody to, to this uh, talk. This uh, is a seminar which uh, by Isaia Nisoli, which is uh, organized jointly between uh, the University of Milano Bicocca and uh, the Dinamici, another internet seminar. Uh, I will be the chair uh, as, uh, for, for this seminar. And uh, it is a pleasure to introduce uh, Isaia Nisoli, who is now at uh, Universidad Federal de Rio de Janeiro. He's going to talk about um, a simple system presenting noise-induced order. Let me just say a couple of words. Um, it's a bit unusual that uh, I am the chair of uh, this seminar. Uh, actually, I've known Isaiah for a very long time, even before uh, university, because uh, we knew each other in uh, acting courses, uh, say theater, when we were in high school. And, uh, so we, we, we come from neighboring place uh, and then uh, we got somewhat in contact uh, during uh, his university and my PhD. Uh, I'm slightly older than he is. And, uh, he, and also he studied uh, at, uh, he did his undergraduate studi studies uh, at the uh, University of Milano Bicocca. So where I am uh, now. And uh, he started with interest uh, with interest in geometry, uh, if I remember correctly. And then uh, he moved to Pisa for the PhD where uh, he gradually moved uh, more uh, into dynamical systems uh, questions. But now more recently, he's also interested in, uh, in problems which uh, have to do with the probability. And that's uh, somehow how I came uh, again into contact with, uh, with uh, Isaiah. So it's a pleasure now to let uh, Isaiah present uh, in the seminar. So you can go, Isaiah. Okay. So first of all, a disclaimer is that uh, the first part of this. So last week I presented this result to, to some physicists. So I made a lot of, of uh, figures. And uh, so I thought the, that it would be nice to show uh, many to show these figures to you too. So I hope it doesn't get to too boring, but uh, I will give a really slow introduction to the team with these uh, figures because I think it's nice and then we, we, we speak more about mathematics. Okay, so it's just uh, in case you get really bored, uh, yeah, just tell me. Okay, so the, the, uh, we are interested in the behavior of this, we take as a, as a model map this map, this is Tx equal to two to the modulus of x to the five minus one. And um, so it, this map is interesting because it has, uh, it has uh, some uh, regions of, uh, of expansions uh, and uh, like from here, it's an expanding region. And from here, it's an expanding region. And then we have this region of contraction here. And um, this, uh, it's a unimodal map uh, and the behavior of these maps is, uh, is delicate. Okay, it's, it's a, there are some, uh, like Stefano is an expert on the, on the topic and uh, these, these maps are delicate to study because you have this coexistence of expansion and contraction. So we are interested in the behavior of, uh, of, the, of, uh, of an orbit of this map and uh, Looking at the histogram, we can see that uh, that we have a lot of uh, that uh, our map that the orbits of a point they spend a lot of time near uh, minus one and near one, and uh, if we compare the uh, two nearby or uh, two nearby points, what we can see is that after after some time they start and they spend time together for some time they start really near. After a while, they start to they are spread out by the diameters. Okay. And uh, so we know birkhoff ergodic theorem tells us that the, that the frequency of visits, uh, if we have a, an absolutely continuous invariant measure for mu almost every point uh, with respect to this measure, uh, the Birkhoff average and the measure is ergodic, the Birkhoff average converged to, to, a, to a value that it's independent from the point and it's uh, the integral of the observable with respect to the measure, okay? So for this map, 
for this map uh, t of x equal to 2x to the 5 minus 1. We have the, the critical the critical value, okay, ends up on a ends up on a repelling fixed point in uh, two iterations, and so this it's full branch. It's really nice. We we have an absolutely continuous invariant measure. Uh, it's mixing uh, with the exponential rate, and it satisfies the central limit theorem. Okay, so uh, this means that the oops, this means that the Okay, so this means that the, if we look at the average, uh, at the at the average of an observable, they will be distributed essentially like a normal. We compute, so we take the computer, we put in a lot of uh, of starting points, we compute uh, orbits uh, of length 400. Okay, so and we get this that we can see that from our numerical experiment that the Lyapunov exponent is, uh, is bigger than zero, okay? So that these, that these average, they concentrate, a, uh, they concentrate a near a number which is bigger than zero, okay? So essentially we have uh, this deterministic system is uh, and meets an ergodic uh, absolutely continuous invariant measure and it has a positive Lyapunov exponent. And now what we can do, what we want to do is that we take the same system but at each step, we had a small noise that is chosen uniformly in the interval minus 0 0.3, 0 0.3, okay? And uh, since uh, we are adding noise, the dynamic could take us out of minus one, one. So we have to fix some boundary conditions. So what happens when, the, when we jump outside of minus one, one, and uh, we take periodic boundary conditions. So if we jump out from, uh, one, we enter from minus one, okay? So what happens here, I will, I will take, I will zoom somewhat more. So I'm sorry. So what happens here is we take the point, okay? Now we make a jump, which is given by the noise. And then we get here, we iterate again, again with the map. We make a jump that is given by the noise, we get, we iterate again by the map, we make a jump that is given by the noise. And so what happens is that the, the orbits of this system, they behave in a different way from the orbits of the original system. And the, our big question today is what's going to happen? So we have taken, a, we have taken noise, a noise of a uniform size noise of minus 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And we can see that the distribution of the orbit inside the interval is much different, okay? So where before we had uh, uh, that the orbits were concentrated, were spending a lot of time near minus one and near one, now we see that the, that the orbit spends time, uh, much more time inside the, inside the contracting part of the dynamics, okay? And what happens is that if we take two points, x0 and epsilon0, and we iterate them under the action of the same noise, okay, so, so we take x0, take x0, okay, and uh, we take t of x0, t of y0, and we are adding at each step the same noise, okay? So what's going to happen? To the orbits of these two points. So in the original system, we had that these orbits, they stayed together for a short time for some iterations and then they were separated. But what happens in this system now is that the orbits, they start nearby and they just stay nearby for all the time. Okay, at some point they became essentially the same orbit. Okay, so we have a, so adding noise, adding noise as a, as a really, really, really uh, strong consequence on the behavior of the system. We had a system that was separating orbits and we have a system now that is approximating orbits, okay? And this is, can be seen by computing, uh, these are all numerical computation I will explain now. So this is the idea of what a physicist would do. We would take this, the, the system, it would 
put on put inside orbits, uh, take a start a lot of starting points, compute the Lyapunov exponents, compute the orbit, compute the average of the of the derivative along the orbit. And what we see is that if we compute the average of the derivative with respect to the orbits, we see that now the the average of the of the derivative with respect to the to the to the of the log of the derivative with respect to the orbit. Now they are concentrated around a negative number. Okay, so this is exactly what the physicists intend as noise-induced order. Okay, so essentially is that with a small noise, with no with a, a small noise, you have a positive Lyapunov exponent, so the orbits are separated. Okay, but with the big noise, the orbits are brought together by the dynamic. And uh, what we can do is uh, we can, uh, this is a graph. Everything that I'm showing now is non, uh, non rigorous. It's not a mathematical proof, but uh, this is a graph of what happens with the computing the Lyapunov exponent with respect to the size of the noise. And we plot this and we can see that, uh, that the Lyapunov exponent has a, really, uh, has a really interesting behavior. So it starts positive and then gets negative, then gets then gets positive back and then gets negative. It has a, so the behavior of the Lyapunov exponent of these experiments of the Lyapunov exponent is, uh, is really interesting in some sense. So adding noise, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, adding noise uh, is, uh, is in our numerical experiments is giving us a lot of, a lot of a much richer behavior of what we expected. In general, when I first look at the problem, I expect, okay, we add noise, so we will see more separation of the orbits. And the question now is, what, what is going on such that when we add noise, the orbits are brought together? Okay, so this is the, this is the question that I would like to try to answer today. And uh, an important remark is that all the things that I've done up to now, are just numerical experiments. So this is not a mathematical proof. It's not even, a, uh, even a, uh, an idea of, uh, of something that could be really happening because when we deal with, with the numerical, with the floating point arithmetics, all, the, all our maps become uh, maps on a finite set. So they are all pre-periodic. So in general, we don't know if uh, what we see numerically or uh, and what we see uh, what we see what what is happening with the mathematical uh, system uh, sorry so yeah can i ask you a question just to clarify yes uh, so you are talking about lyapunov exponents or probability of finding lyapunov exponents and are they lyapunov exponents or finite time lyapunov exponents no i so up to now, everything is finite time, okay? And we just have, uh, it's just some data that I'm throwing in. But now I will prove a theorem that says that, okay, if you start with the Lyapunov, I, I, will, prove a, I will prove a theorem about the properties of the Lyapunov exponent of the system. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, right. So what happens is that uh, this, uh, what we are seeing numerically in principle may not exist. So. What we want, what I will do now is to prove effectively that I, we have that the Lyapunov exponent for the map with some small noise is positive and the Lyapunov exponent for the map with a lot of noise is negative. So, and I, I will explain what's the argument that permits us to prove this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this property. So we have a unique station. So with the system with noise, we have a unique stationary measure and I will explain, I will give some, uh, some, uh, some ideas on how do we prove this. And we have a negative, uh, when, when we have a big noise, I can prove that, they, that we have a negative Lyapunov exponent. So this, this, uh, this, um, this noise induced order was, uh, was uh, we first discovered about this, this, uh, this um, this phenomena at a conference that at ICTP that was organized by, by Stefano Luzzato and uh, Stefano Galato, I think, uh, that was on computability and the computation of uh, in ergodic theory. 
And at this conference, uh, we met uh, Yuzuru Sato, who is a theoretical physicist from uh, Japan, who introduced us to the team. And, um, and he showed us this model. Uh, that is a model from the Bellos of Zerbotinsky reaction uh, by two applied mathematicians, two Japanese applied mathematicians that are called the Matsumoto and Suda, that wrote this paper that is called the noise induced work. Okay. And uh, this model of the BZ map is ugly. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it has contracting parts, expanding parts. It has uh, a situ discontinuity at some point. It has a point where the derivative is infinite, a point where the derivative is zero. So it's a, it's a really complicated map. And so uh, this kind of phenomena was considered to be really pathological. In some sense, we expected these, these phenomena to be, to be really pathological. And, uh, and we proved that the, the existence of this phenomena, indeed, it was not proved. It was just numerical, numerical experiments by, the, by, by Matsumoto and Tsuda. There was a lot of research, on, uh, especially in applied mathematics and, uh, and, uh, and physics uh, about this phenomena. This paper by Matsumoto and Tsuda has more than 300, almost 400 citations, but there was no proof of this, uh, of this uh, phenomenon. So we developed this uh, um, a computer -aided, uh, uh, computer-aided discretization scheme that permits us to approximate uh, this, uh, this system with noise, with noise by a Markov chain. And uh, then we prove, uh, then we have some, some results about uh, how near is the steady state of the Markov chain with respect to the stationary measure? Some rigorous results that give us an error in L1. And then we use this error in L1 to compute an enclosure, an interval that contains the Lyapunov exponent of the, of the BZ map. And this uh, permits us to do a computer assisted proof of noise induced order in this, uh, in this system. Okay? But today I, I will show a sufficient condition, a sufficient criterion to show that there is noise induced order and it is really simple. Okay. <laughs> My conjecture is, is, uh, is simple. So we have a system which has a, a unique, uh, absolutely continuous invariant measure with positively up of exponent. And then if the integral of the logarithm of the derivative, the derivative with respect to Lebesgue is smaller than zero, then we have noise in this world. And uh, the argument, uh, so what kind of noise? In, so you can think about being the uniform Isaiah, noise. Isaiah, when you say we have noise in this order, you mean for some strength of the noise? Eh? For some strength of the noise, you have this transition from positive the to positive exponent. The noise is always additive and always uniform in an interval. You you. Mm -hmm. So the only the only thing that we need on the on the noise is that it is uh, it has it yeah you are saying it right now sorry sorry I'm reading yeah, yeah. the slide right now sorry no no it has to be of bounded variation okay and what happens we want the the support so if we have a noise of size c bigger than c c hat bigger than c what we want is that the support of C hat contains the support of C. Okay, so this sorry, is Isaiah. why. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I also had a question about that, about the exact definition of noise induced order. So uh, when you say negatively up no exponent, you mean that the stationary measure has negatively up no exponent. Yes. So essentially, what you do is that you can, so you have an ergodic theorem for a, for a, for, uh, for um, Markov chains, because now it's a Markov chain. So yeah, you know that for every orbit, with probability one, you're going to see this Lyapunov exponent, the, which is the integral with respect to the stationary measure. Uh, ah, so, but, but independently of the choice of the realization? So with probability one. So there may be choices which have probability zero that bring you to other to other to other to but other exponents, but 
but for with probability one, you are going to see for probability almost one every realization. Like, yes, almost every realization you see this Lyapunov exponent. Okay. Is a, yeah, since everybody is asking questions, maybe I'll ask my own questions. And I think I missed the exact definition of Lyapunov exponent in the context of noise. So this is just uh, a bit so, of some of the logs of the derivative of the map. With, yes, uh, and uh, and uh, since it is ergodic, is essentially is the. If so you mean the noise doesn't act on the derivative? So you're really not looking at at the deviation of two nearby uh, orbits or anything like this. It's just a let's say an no. algebraic type of definition. Yes, it, essentially, essentially what you do is that uh, you take so if you take these uh, these. Um, this xn plus one, you take the limb of one over n of sum of uh, log t prime of x i, i equal to zero to n minus one, okay? And uh, by the ergodic theorem for, uh, for stationary measure, then you get that this is equal to the integral of log of t prime. Yes, this is in the case without noise. Yeah, no, no, this no, is in the, the case is also with noise. So it, it doesn't enter the derivative, I guess it's... Uh... Yes, it doesn't it enter ent the derivative. It, enter, it enters the derivative in the sense that different points, I mean, unless, okay. You may have different yeah, relations can have different, different uh, sequences of noises, if you see yes. what I'm saying. But anyway, so, okay, so you're taking the assumption that it's the noise is the, it's the same for both, let's say, trajectories both near, nearby trajectories that you want to look at. Something yes, like what that. happens is that you see these, uh, these, uh, these uh, when I was speaking about uh, uh, this, guy, this thing, what happens is that you start with two trajectories and then you add the same noise. Okay. okay? okay. At each if step. It, okay, if it's okay. the same noise, yes. Thank you very much, sorry. So, uh, so, what what I'm asking essentially is that the, is that the noise as this uh, is of bounded variation, okay? This uh, regularity assumption, and I want the support of the noise uh, of the noise with the bigger with bigger uh, with bigger size to contain the support of the noise of a smaller size. So essentially, I don't want something like this. I don't want a function of bounded variation that is something like this, okay? So that, uh, in some sense, uh, I don't want. S sorry, I don't want something Diana, like. Sorry, may I ask a question? Since everyone is yes. asking, I didn't understand yes. quite well the the conjecture and the, what you are doing now. You are proving or giving an idea why you you have this conjecture on. Uh, I, I will uh, now. I'm I'm explaining what. Is precisely what I'm your sorry, sorry. Precisely, what is your conjecture? First, so please. so let's see. So we have this function lambda c. Okay. So if we call a fix c, okay, the stationary measure when the noise when the noise has size. C, and we call lambda C the integral of logarithm of T prime D F C. So with respect to this stationary measure, okay. Then this function, this under the, this function uh, crosses from bigger to zero to smaller than zero. Okay, so essentially, we have this function that is the law that is the Lyapunov exponent of the stationary measure, and this function is positive for a while and then crosses and goes negative. Okay, so what I'm proving in this is this. So, Lisa, yes. So the existence of the stationary measure has some assumptions, or it's automatic. Yes. I I will explain. Uh, I will uh, I will give now the ideas that bring uh, that show how how things work okay so uh, one thing so we have the, the support of this noise has to be bigger than the other but 
if uh, so we don't want this thing like two separate supports that are spread out because this could lead you to so when you're growing when you are growing the size you could see many different uh, many different behaviors but something like this works fine like if you take something like this uh, um, something like this works fine okay so because when you when you're spreading out the support of this uh, this is used to I, I will explain where I use this okay so what the how do we prove this? What we are going to do is, to, is studying the annealed transfer operator. So if we take the push, for, push forward operator associated to a dynamical system, and sometimes I think it's, it's useful to think at, at this action on data measures. So we have that, we have that if we have a data measure on X, this is sent to the, to the data measure on the image of the point. So what we do, we are studying an operator which is related to this one that is called the annealed transfer operator, okay? And the annealed transfer operator is defined as Xe convolution of proxy after we applied L. And uh, this, uh, essentially you can think something like this. So you're taking, so you take, suppose phi is in L infinity and so you take phi of tx plus c d rho uh, c okay something like this and so what we so what we what happens is that if we take a bounded function and we look and we define the this is t x c star phi this is a, this sends a bounded function into a bounded function where we are taking the average over all possible. We take the point, we take the average along, along this point. If we take the dual operator that is acting on measures, this is going to be exactly this LC. So what happens is that we are sending a, a point to the future. And what happens is that what what we are going to see is that we are going to see uh, so this is t of x and so what we are going to see is that we are going to see if we think about the uniform distribution we are going to see that this point is spread out uniformly around t of x okay so essentially we have the transfer operator for the deterministic system when we add this noise what happens is that it, this this noise sending deltas into uniform distributions and this is essentially is the point is the point of our proof this is telling us that all the measures are sent into are sent into uh, into functions of bounded variations okay because we take a, a delta it's sent into into a uniform distribution around t of x so we can do this for all measures and we get this so let's go let's go to the theorem and the theorem says okay so i i split the hypothesis into into two parts and that this with d are the hypotheses on the deterministic dynamical system okay and the, with r are the hypotheses on the random dynamical system okay so what happens when we add some noise okay so Suppose that we have a, a, a non-singular measurable dynamical system such, such that it has a unique ACM with density F0 and the, the, the Lyapunov exponent is positive. And suppose that there is a C0 such that the Lyapunov exponent of the stationary measure is continuous in zero epsilon zero. There exists a small C1 into this interval such that the operator is contracting the space of average zero measures in BV with exponential rate. And the, the integral of the logarithm with respect to the bag is more than zero, okay? Then the map uh, exhibits noise induced order. So I will try to, so these hypotheses are essentially a, are 
what we want on the on the original map. This hypothesis I will explain is sometimes called the stochastic stability. Or it's a consequence of stochastic stability. And uh, this second one also in some sense is a consequence of stochastic stability. And this is this is what happens when the noise is big. But sorry, um, is a yeah. Yes. So shouldn't you have some assumptions saying that xi zero is big enough? Uh, the connection between xi zero, so you have this c one and xi zero. Okay, but uh, okay, this is this is delicate. But I have a, a small result that proves that in my case we have this. Uh, we have we can take c one smaller as we want, as small as we want. But uh huh. So, okay, but 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 this theorem. I mean, it, so because this theorem is satisfied, I think, for example, for the quadratic map for the top quadratic map. Uh, but this, uh, oh, this no. last one? This oh, the last, last one. one. The last one is not satisfied. Is not satisfied. Yeah, the last so one. So what I'm satisfied. doing, what I'm doing is exactly this. I'm taking the top, I, I took the quadratic one, and then I, I made it more contractive, okay? And making that more contractive, I get the hypothesis R3. Ah, sorry. So you're saying that the uh, condition D2 Together with condition R three, kind yes. of they they only work in certain cases. Yes, it's not true for all, so it's not right. true for all alpha. So here I put five. I put right. five exactly because I know that uh, I will show you now. There is a condition that I have that proves that for this kind of unimodal maps, uh, I have a, a constant that is called the alpha tilde. And I know that this constant is bigger by, than 2.8. Okay, I don't remember all the digits. But when you pass this constant, if, you, if your map is, is uh, as a vanishing of order bigger than this one, then you get noise induced order. So it's strictly bigger than two. It's between two and three. Sorry, Zaya, what is V0 in condition R2? V0, uh, V0 is uh, uh, just uh, just one second. So V zero is the space. Uh, let's say is the in this case in B V, but uh, so are the f in B V such that the integral of f d m is equal to zero. So are the average zero functions. So if if we have a if we have a a, a stationary measure, a unique stationary measure. So this is the complement essentially of the unique stationary measure. So you know that the complement is being contracting in BV fast. Okay. It's more clear. So respect to the bag or respect to the the uh, the invariant measure? The, the zero with respect, to, with respect to the bag. Okay. okay exactly. Yeah. Because this because since f is a density, you know that the integral of f. If you take the, the stationary measure, you know that the integral of f with respect to the bag is going to be one, okay? So everything that is integral zero is, uh, is in some sense in the, is in the complement, in the orthogonal complement, okay? So there's a, sorry, one, one more question. So there are many, of course, there's a many one-dimensional dynamical systems in which D1, D2, R1, and R2 unknown, right? So you could, so I guess you could formulate this in more particular setting, but by choosing one of these dynamical system and then R3 becomes the only condition kind of, if you start with one of those systems. Right? Yes, but uh, you know, the, one, the reason why I choose uh, R2, so the fact that these are known for many dynamical system is, uh, is not so, is, uh, is true, but this, uh, this is a general result. Why? Sure, because, sure, sure. Because for example, so you may have the, the, that for C equal to zero, 
the, the system as a polynomial decay of correlation. But for C slightly bigger than zero, and I have this result, then you get exponential decay of correlation. So this result is written in this way so that you, I can uh, essentially, the biggest issue now to Just prove my results in general is uh, our results on stochastic stability, okay? And the, these results on stochastic stability are, are uh, really technical and complicated. And uh, so uh, I, I will just, I will continue commenting and I will uh, explain to you what's sure. Uh, sure. So how do, we, how do we prove, how, how does the argument work? Uh, I proved that the upon of exponent is continuous. Okay, so essentially this is a proof from Calculus one or or uh, or uh, or uh, or uh, analysis one. We prove that the function is continuous. The function is positive for some value and it's negative for some value. So we have the transition. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that if we have some uh, some if we have this condition on on uh, on decay of correlation exponential for some small value of the noise then we get it for free for all bigger values of the noise, okay? And since this, this, condition, this condition implies continuity in BV of the, of the stationary measure, okay? Then we get continuity of the, of the function, okay? So uh, the idea why we get this why we get this mixing so the idea is the following so take suppose that we have two noise size uh, this is c big c and then you have a small size that is small c okay and now what we do is that we partition the interval into similar intervals and we look at the disk at the matrices okay of LXC and LXC hat when we are when we are restricted to this to this partition. Okay, so we are going to see two matrices: uh, matrix MXC, uh, matrix MXC hat. Okay, but since the support of uh, MXC of the noise with C hat is bigger than the support of XC, so what happens is that the non-zeros of this matrix. Okay, so the, the non-zeros that, that is telling you, look, you have a positive transition probability of getting from this interval to this interval. Since this, the support of this noise is bigger, so we have strictly more non-zeros. Okay, so essentially this matrix, if we take the matrix only uh, where we put a one when we have a non-zero entry and a, a zero when we have a zero entry, this matrix is smaller is or equal than MC for uh, uh, component wise, okay? And since this is smaller than component wise, this means that uh, this is true also for the iterations. And this means that if two variables are coupled by this system, okay, after a while, so if you have a time N when you know that it, Whatever you start with two random variables governed by Lc, they end at, at time n, they are inside the same state, okay? Then this is true also for m c hat. This is just follows from the fact that the support of the big noise contains the support of the small noise, okay? And so this means that the, that the m c, if m c mixes, in n step, then mc hat with the bigger noise also mixes in n steps. Okay. Now, okay, this this works for a discretization, but we have a result in our uh, in our um, in our paper with Stefan and Maurizio that tells us that since our noise is in BV, what happens with the discretization is essentially the same as what happens with the original Markov chain. Okay. And so if we prove mixing for the discretization, we prove a mixing for the Markov chain at step n plus one. 
Okay, so and since this is true for all uh, noises that are bigger than uh, than C, then if we see mixing at some noise size, then we see mixing at all bigger noise size. Okay. Uh, so what happens is that if we have mixing, I said, I think I forgot to say something. Okay. But if we have mixing, okay, uh, I think I, I put a slide. Ah, okay. This, this is a slide that I should have shown before. So due to the convolution in the definition of LC, we have that LC is a bounded operator from L1 to BV. So it takes all the function in L1 and in one step, they're sent into functions in BV. And uh, this in particular tells us that if we have a stationary measure, it is in BV. And uh, if we have decay of correlations in BV, we have decay of correlation in L1, which in turn implies unicity of the stationary measure also with respect, so since, since all the measures are sent into bounded variation in one step, then we know that uh, essentially if we have decay of correlation in BV, then we have unicity of the stationary measure in the space of measures. And we know that this stationary measure is going to be in BV, okay? So, in, uh, so when we are dealing with a regular enough noise, knowing that we have decay of correlation as striking uh, consequences. It's telling us that we have a unique uh, stationary measure. It's telling us that this stationary measure is unique in the space of, of probability measures uh, that it, and that it is in BV. And moreover, we have a way of, of uh, simply writing, uh, uh, essentially this, uh, we have that BV is a stronger norm than, uh, is a stronger norm than, uh, than L1, but these, uh, this, uh, this inequality tells us also that we have a way to bound the BV norm from above by L1. So essentially, if we have a, a, a noise which is in BV, L1 and BV are equivalent norms. And this is, this is, in, this is really, really strong because because it's, uh, it permits us to, to play around and to get a lot of regularity from really small information, really, really weak information on the Markov chain. So, uh, so what happens is that uh, if we have, uh, if we have the, 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 the station, in, if the operator is, is mixing, is exponentially mixing in, uh, in BV, what happens is that uh, this guy here goes to zero as C hat going to C, going to C, this guy is uniformly bounded by one. And so this guy here is going to be smaller or equal than the sum of C times theta to the N for K equal to zero and minus one. Okay, so what happens is that if at some point you have mixing in BV, then you get continuity in BV of the stationary measure. And this is, this is a trick. So if you have a continuity in BV of the stationary measure, then the, we know that, uh, that the, um, by hypothesis R3, the logarithm, is, uh, the logarithm of the derivative is in L1 of Lebesgue, okay? So uh, we have continuity in BV. This, tell, this tells us that this function is continuous, okay? So essentially, what I, what, I, what I say is that, okay, if I know that here, if here is mixing, okay, from here above, I know that the function is continuous, okay? Then we get continuity. Okay, and uh, so now, we get to the difficult part. So the difficult part that is the things that uh, I've not done, okay? And <laughs> the, which is something that uh, I, so it's a, uh, it's, uh, so here is this uh, R1, essentially is this hypothesis R1. So 
Stochastic stability means that when we take this, the, the Markov chain as it, the, to the dynamical system, the stationary measure of the, of the Markov chain converges when the size of the noise goes to zero to the absolutely continuous invariant measure of the original system. And this is uh, difficult to prove. Uh, there is a, a nice, uh, there, is a, there are some conjectures. I read uh, a conjecture by Marcelo in, uh, in some slides that he wrote for some seminar. Maybe he changed the conjecture after that, but that uh, if we have positive Lyapunov exponent and a unique ACM, then we expect the system to have a st strong stochastic stability. Uh, but uh, so this is the point that, uh, that lacks to be proved for my, for my, for my conjecture. So that positive Lyapunov exponent implies stochastic stability, and then we get everything. But uh, what I do is that I use a, a result by Shen, and that is, uh, uh, that is really powerful. So it says that if you have this summability condition of exponent one, then you get stochastic stability, you get strong stochastic stability. And, uh, and this is uh, essentially, this is what we use, this is what gives us this uh, hypothesis R1, okay? And uh, for hypothesis R2, oh, uh, uh, for hypothesis R2, I didn't write a slide, but I can comment it here. What I do is that I, I, I show that if, if uh, the noise is in BV and uh, there exists a fixed point in support of FC, then we get exponential decay. And the, the idea is really simple, okay? So what happens is that if, uh, if you have a system, if the noise is in BV, again, the dynamical system essentially behaves as if it was a finite state Markov chain, okay? Said in, in, a, in, a, in a really intuitive way. If you have, since uh, the, the paper by Shen, it, it proves unicity of the unicity of a stationary measure for small c, okay? So since the noise is in BV, we know that the operator is compact, okay? We have a unique eigenvalue, uh, eigenvalue of modulus one, but we could have some periodicity going on, okay? If there is a, a fixed point, if there is a fixed point, due to the properties of, of, our, of our system, we have some, we have a set that is sent into itself with period one. So we, so this proves that the period of the whole Markov chain due to irreducibility has to be one. And so we have a spectral gap and we have, and we have exponential decay of correlations in BV. Okay, so this is essentially is hypothesis Archer. And uh, indeed, we can, um, we can, uh, this can be weakened. Uh, and instead of asking for a fixed point, you can ask for a C fixed point, which is essentially a fixed point, uh, a point which is moved less than the size of the noise. If you have a point that is moved less than the size of the noise, then you have a set which returns into itself with period one and we, you get a periodicity of the Markov chain and you get exponential decay of correlations. Okay, so what happens when the size of the noise is big? When the size of the noise is big, we are making a, a jump by the dynamics and then the noise is moving us uniformly, essentially inside the interval, minus one, one. Okay, so what happens is that we are going to spend, uh, we are going to visit the contracting part of the system much more often than, uh, than we were doing before, okay? So, so we make a jump, the dynamic is contracting nearby points when we apply the dynamic, we jump again, 
We apply the noise, so we have a high probability on getting again inside the contracting part. The dynamics is contracting. This, uh, so in some sense, I imagine this thing. It's I have a I have a I have a force that is moving. This is moving the particles nearby here, and there is a force that is moving them away here. And uh, what happens is that when when we are following only the dynamic. We are spending a lot of time inside here. Okay. So what happens is that the, the two particles are moved away by the dynamics. But when the noise is big, we are going to visit this contracting part with much higher frequency. So, so we are going to particles are going to be moved nearby a lot of times. And so so the probability, so what happens is that we are going to see a contracting behavior instead of seeing an expanding behavior. And this is essentially is the, the thesis. What I do is that, um, so what I do is I compute the Lyapunov exponent for my family here when, uh, when uh, with respect to Lebesgue, okay, which is going to be the behavior when we have a lot of noise. And you can see that uh, here at uh, 2.6785 uh, there is an interval here i can compute the value of this guy okay uh, that here we have a transition from positive to negative and so we have that for alpha bigger than this value we have proved that there exists at least one transition okay by this continuity argument but the, the thing which is really fun is that the landscape is much more complicated. Okay, so if you look, so this is this is this is the size of the noise, okay, uniform noise, and this is the exponent of the map. So uh, I, I will zoom inside here. So you can see that for alpha big, for alpha big, that for alpha big like alpha bigger than, so alpha equal to five, you can see that we have, that we have a, this is the zero, the zero level curve. So you can see that we are crossing it many times, but there are points where we have, uh, where we have, uh, uh, where we have tangencies. So there are some values of alpha for which we have tangencies and uh, there are some uh, tangency between negative exponents that then, and then, then uh, have a tendency at, uh, with, the, with the level curve. So the landscape and the behavior of these maps when we add noise is really, really, really complicated. It's really, I think it, it's really exciting because uh, I never expect to, this to be the case. Uh, I'm working with my PhD student and we are going to make, to make this graph uh, rigorous by using the techniques of rigorous computation that we developed with uh, with Stefan and Maurizio. And I think that the, it's really exciting because we are seeing a, 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 a plethora of phenomena that we, we never expected, that are totally unexpected. That so is, uh, at least can you I, I don't understand what it is. What is it about this picture that you find so interesting? What what is it? So, so this is the zero. This is the 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 level curve of zero. Of zero what? Le zero expo exp zero. The of exponent equal to zero, with respect uh -huh. to the exponent and with respect to the noise size. Okay, and here is probably is going to, to do something like this. I don't have a drawing. And probably here near zero, there are probably there are a lot of strange stuff. But look, so you're like, saying that it's interesting just that it has that shape is interesting or what? It is interesting because if you take, if you take, look, so if you take- Because it's uh, not monotone. Uh, or... It's not monotone. And, uh, and what happens is that uh, already with relatively small uh, exponent, like five or six, you're going to see uh, Really, really, really strange behavior. And uh, okay, in in our model, in the model that we have seen now, this may not be so interesting. But but uh, I'm working with uh, with uh, with uh, with Alex Blumenthal I, in 
in studying the in studying the the Lorentz contracting Lorentz one dimensional map. And there you may have a lot of you may have tendencies that are much bigger than two there because they depend in some sense from they depend from the exponent of the from the exponent of the Lorentz flow at the origin. And so this is telling us that look, uh, the behavior of the system with noise may be uh, may be extremely delicate. So we, we are not only, so here you can see that the, when, uh, when, the, when alpha grows, you get this kind of really wild behavior, really near zero, okay? So, so in some sense, it's telling us, look, uh, it's, stochastic stability is interesting, but you have to at least have some idea of what's, what's happening when you add some small noise. And I think it's, I know it's, it sounds, uh, but I think it's interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah, as you're saying, because the results of stochastic stability are infinitesimal. So they say that if your noise is sufficiently small, then you're close. But, but what you're saying is that this may be extremely small. So you might actually get very different things. Yes, and if you think uh, this may be one of the reasons why Proving stochastic stability for flat, for flat unimodal maps is so difficult. There is a, there is a, I know that, um, I know that uh, there are some people working on this topic, and I know that it's a really difficult topic. And if you if you look at uh, at uh, at my hypothesis, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, avoiding the case of uh, so no no, it's, but essentially this hypothesis is one of the hypotheses that is used that they are working on when trying to prove to prove stochastic stability for flat unimodal maps. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry if, uh, if things became so, but so essentially this is what I wanted to tell you. Uh, ah, if you are interested, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, we can, I have also this uh, result, uh, pi alpha beta, beta two beta times x to the alpha minus one. And so what happens is that uh, I can prove noise induced order for a small interval near one for beta. So essentially we have continuity. Once we have noise, we have continuity. So we can, uh, this, is, I know that this is something that interests you, Stefano. So, so, yeah, there are some, uh, the, in the paper there are some more, there is some more stuff. But anyway, thank you for your attention. This is Mimi. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Isaiah, for a uh, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, we already had uh, many questions, but uh, I think uh, there might be even more. So and everybody is welcome to, to ask uh, for question or Say comments. Well, I have another one actually, even though I've asked lots of questions already. Um, you you emphasize this exponential decay of correlation, but is that a that sounds like just a technical condition, right? You don't have counter examples if you don't have this exponential decay of correlations. So what happens is that. Um... Is that if uh, since this is, since the system with noise with bounded variation is essentially a, a finite state system between uh, then uh, if you have polynomial decay of correlation then you get uh, exponential decay of correlation this is because the operator is compact and uh, so you get everything for free. So you're saying it's not a very important condition. It's not a very no. restrictive condition. It's not really restrictive because once you have noise, then you get it for once you have. A, uh -huh. So what happens is that when you have noise, then the spectrum of the operator, then the operator is compact, okay? And uh, so you have, uh, you may have, um, you may have roots of unity, uh -huh. you may have one, but when you, when you prove that it's aperiodic, then you show that the second eigenvalue is inside here, so you get automatically 
that is uh, that you have exponential decay of correlation. If you have polynomial decay of correlation, then uh, since the system is compact, since the operator is compact, you get automatically that it's also that it, it is also it is also exponential because you, correlation decay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I have a very basic question. Uh, so, uh, the, as far as I understand, uh, your proof technique uh, is uh, okay. For, is the, first the observation that the Lyapunov exponent is a continuous function uh, as a function of the noise strength. Mm -hmm. Then you have by assumption that uh, for zero noise exponent, uh, uh, you have a positive Lyapunov, expo Lyapunov exponent. So, the last point uh, is to ensure that for some other uh, value of, of the noise size, uh, you have a strictly negative uh, Lyapunov exponent. And this uh, follows by your last assumption, R3, OK? Yes. Because somehow R3 is, is simple to state because uh, it's a condition on just with an integral with respect to the back measure. And yes. then uh, the, uh, so if, if I got correctly, uh, uh, the point is that when you take a very large uh, noise uh, size, your invariant measure will converge to the back measure. And yes. so yeah, if you ask this condition for for the integral, it will be satisfied for a sufficiently large uh, noise uh, strength. Is that correct? Yes, okay. it's, a, it's okay. exactly okay. the argument. Because if you if you want to, so you have the the the, the norm in BV. This, is, if it is a fixed point, is the same of this as this one, and uh, in BV. And then we prove that the operator is uh, is. Um, is uh, is contracting, okay? Is uh, is uh, is bounded from L one to BV, so you have that when this C goes to zero, then the variation. Then uh, I'm sorry, this should be the the variation the variation of. Then the variation goes to zero. And uh, so if you have a function which is in BV, and uh, and it has. Uh, Zero variation and the density one it is uh, it is the and the, it is um, it is the it is uniform it's Lebesgue. Okay. 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 If there are no further question, 